show, all the top tunes that... Hey, Monica! What are you doing? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Give them just what they get in the big house. It's the Joey and Rory Show! With this week's special guest, Val Story! This week's episode brought to you by Roper Apparel. Where the West. And now... He's a championship cattle roper, and she's an award-winning songwriter. Hear that? I'm sorry. She's an award-winning cattle roper. He's the... She ropes cows and things. Uh, he writes songs. Here they are. Joey and Rory! They were both made of leather, both black and frayed and worn. I was brought up to respect them since the day that I was born. One came here from England, it's been handed down for years. The other one was ordered from a catalog at Sears. One my mama read to me till I was well into my teens And I thought all the other one was for was to hold up daddy's jeans Till I told a lie and learned it had another purpose too Out behind the shed my daddy said this will hurt me more than you Cause one had my daddy's name on it the other said King James With love they taught us lessons But we feared them both the same One led us to heaven And the other left to well But those were the days when kids were raised With a Bible and a bell Remember when I was 12, I stole a dime store comic book. And how Mama read where the scripture said to take back what I took. When I refused, my daddy grabbed my arm and said, Come on, I needed more he knew than just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, sometimes it made me cry. Sometimes they made me fighting mad And I'd wish I'd been raised without them Like some other children had But now I'm grown with kids of my own And I know just how they felt You know it seems to me what the world still needs Is a Bible and a bell Cause one had my daddy's name on it the other said King James With love they taught us lessons We feared them both the same One led us to heaven And the other hurt like hell but Those were the days when kids were raised With the Bible and a bell A Bible My, how those words ring true to me as a kid growing up. How about you? <laughs> Y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You'll be all right. His and Hers, the On brand new album from ACM winners Joey and Rory. When I'm gone. Order yours now at joeyandrory.com.
Fellas, you ever notice how these holidays will sneak up on you sometime? Well, it happened to me one night. I was coming home, and I was almost to the house, and it hit me. gum! it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> well, I was done past town. I was almost to the house. I didn't want to have to turn around and go back to town. Well, there's a little old grocery store over there in Mount Pleasant over there, and I thought, well, shoot, I better stop and do something. They usually have a little old flyer or something you can get, you know. Well, I got over there, and they were sold out. The cards was picked through, everything. So I thought, well, I got to get creative. So I come home. I told my wife, I said, get on out of the room while I fix you Valentine's presents here. And I had bought seven two-pound bags of Martha White flour, and I stacked them up there real nice. And I said, come on in here, honey. And she come in there, and she said, what in the world is that? And I said, well, it's a flower arrangement. <laughs> Think about it. Kept me out of the doghouse anyway for a couple of days. I moved to Nashville in the fall of 1998, and I came here to be a singer. And I did what everybody said to do, which was go to the Bluebird Cafe and listen to the songwriters tell their stories and sing their songs. So that's what I did. And um, I walked in and I was listening to these guys and there were four of them telling their stories and singing their songs. But there was one guy in particular that was wearing overalls and he kind of had some red spiky hair going on. And he just caught my attention by the way he was telling his stories, the songs he was singing, the heart that he was emoting through his music. And I just kind of sat there in awe, not knowing anything about this man, but through every song I kept falling deeper and deeper in love with this guy, not even knowing a, th a single thing about him. And about a few songs into the performance, he introduced his little girls, Heidi and Hopi, to the audience. And I was really just disappointed because I thought, man, this guy's married and he's got babies and so two years went by and, and I, I got a record deal and I was you know trying to work music and I was working for this horse vet and one of the doctors invited me to go with his wife to a, a songwriters night and I said sure I'd love to go who's playing and he mentioned Rory's name and I said, wait a minute, I said, Roy Feek, the guy that wears overalls, and he sang that song, The Chain of Love, and he said, yeah, that's him. I said, oh, I gotta tell you, I saw that guy play at the Bluebird two years ago, and I love everything about that guy. I love the way he walked, I love the way he talked, he told stories. I said, if that guy wasn't married, I would have married him the next day. And uh, Dr. Bob said, well, well, he's not married, he's... He's been a single dad for like the last 12 years, and um, he's raised his girls by himself. I said, are you serious? I said, well, that makes me love him even more, and I still don't know anything about him. I am going to that show. I want to see him. I just want to see if all those feelings that I had from the first time I saw him are still there. And so I went, and I was so excited, and I went running up the steps, and my feet landed, and I looked up, and there he stood in his overalls, and he was greeting everybody as they were coming through the door. And I just was like, I couldn't say anything. And I said, hello. And he said, well, hello. I think I said, well, hello. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went and I ran and I got my seat. And I was just nervous as can be. And uh, so I sat and I listened to him perform and, and all of his songs and through every, every song and every word, I was falling deeper and deeper in love. And then I, I knew that he, you know, that maybe I just didn't know. I didn't know anything. I just knew that I really respected him and admired him, and I could tell he was a really great person. A couple days later, I was in the studio, and my friend, uh, Tim Johnson, who I've written a lot of songs with, walked in, and he said, I got two words for you. He said, Joey Martin. I said, Joey Martin, that girl hates me. <laughs> and he said, I don't know about that. He said, after the show last weekend, he said, my wife and I were giving her a ride back to her truck, and she asked about you and asked if you were dating anybody, and I said, Hmm. So I, uh, I left her a message again. I said, Joey Martin, this is Rory. Here's my home number. I will be at home later on tonight if you want to talk to me. So she called me about 9 p.m. and I'm sitting in that um, green room over there in the farmhouse here. 
And the uh, very first thing she ever said to me, no converse, we never had a conversation before, the very first thing she ever said was, I saw you play at that songwriter's night about two years ago at the Bluebird Cafe, and she said, I loved everything about you, and I knew in that moment you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives together. So we talked for a little bit, and then she said, the reason I've been kind of being cold and distant to you is that those feelings were so strong the first time, and then I came back to see you at the Bluebird Cat or at this other songwriter's night, and those feelings were still there. And she said, I feel it so strong, but in the last year and a half, I've been dating another fella back in Indiana, and so I just want you to know if things were different, you and I were going to be together. And I said, really? So I, I'm, I was your destiny, but now I'm not your destiny. She said, yep. I said, wow. Uh, we got to spend a little bit of time together, though, and we wrote one song. You remember the first song we ever wrote? I do remember the first song. It was a really special one because it was literally, it talked about how we kind of both knew there were these feelings that we had for one another, but it didn't look like we were going to be together. What if I hadn't gone along With that other guy What if you hadn't sang that song And made me start to cry And what if you hadn't said hello or smiled at me that way and Maybe I wouldn't be hurting so The way I am today But I'm thankful for the day What if I wasn't home? And what if we hadn't shared that cup of coffee all alone? And what if I hadn't felt your kiss? What if my heart didn't fall? Of all the things I'd miss if we never loved at all. But I'm thankful for the day we met that evening in September. Cause I'd rather have some. I'd rather have something to forget than nothing to remember. Nothing to Y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
If you're ever south of Nashville, stop into our little family cafe, Marcy Joe's Meal House. Let's see what they've got cooking on their menu today. Y'all come on in. Stay wherever you want. Well, hi, we're down here at Marcy Joe's. This is Marcy, my sister-in-law, the little restaurant that we own together, just about a mile from our farmhouse. Well, today we're gonna share our recipe on how to make angel biscuits. So Marcy, go ahead and get us started. Okay, well, we got all our dry ingredients in here. We've got our flour, our sugar, our baking soda. And then next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some shortening. Mm -hmm. oh, of course, you wanna have butter-flavored shortening, of right, course. Right, that's really important because you want a really good buttery flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you want to cut it in there really good till it's tiny pieces. That's really important too. Yeah. And then after that, I usually I do my yeast and then I do my but. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, beautiful. Oh, they are. But honey, we're in a oh, restaurant. So I know, but you're making angel biscuits. I found some angels. Oh, oh they so are sweet. pretty beautiful. That they must have been from this. What? No, 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 no. We're we're making some. Well, they're out there in the shed, I think that stray cat had some baby kitties. Oh, they're but they're so out there. tiny. Such well, well, thank you How's for it sharing. Oh, it's perfect. going well. It's going well. <laughs> He's asking for biscuits. Yeah. Uh, you got some milk here. Aww. Well, we do, but we're going to go ahead and get these started okay. and get them going. Thank you for showing us this. All right, though. we're going to take them out. Oh, we'll see you at home. So okay, bye-bye. I love you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you can't believe they did they that. They brought them in the restaurant. Germany Christmas. Okay, okay so anyway. anyway, I've got that already cut in. So I think you've already got yes, it done over I've got there, the, right? I've got the dough right here. And what okay. I'm going to do is show you guys how we, we roll them out because that's really important when you have your biscuits. You don't want to get these too thin. If you get right. them too thin, they're going to not rise and, and do very well. So get your surface um, area really nice and floured because they will stick. I like to put a little bit of flour on top too so they roll out a bit nicer. Just like so. Speaking of Angel Biscuits, Marcy, how did we come up with the name Angel well, Biscuits? Well, you know, it's funny. Everybody asks me uh, every day here, what is an Angel Biscuit? And I tell them it's a homemade buttermilk biscuit made by an angel. <laughs> I love that. I, I bet think they it's love it too. Oh, yeah, they do. They get the biggest <laughs> kick out of that. That is so sweet. Well, good. Well, here you go. We've got our dough rolled out nice and even, kind of. You want to make sure it's thick. Yep. And then you're going to go ahead and get your regular biscuit cutter. If you don't have a biscuit cutter, some people don't, you can just use the top of a glass jar yeah. or a ball yeah. jar or anything like that. And then go ahead and just make your cut. And you're going to just um, put these on a uh, cookie sheet in an oven at 350 for about 17 to 20 minutes, something like that. And they'll come out just nice and golden. You don't yeah. really have to let these rise either. If you let them set for about 30 minutes, they'll right. really fluff up nice and, right. nice and pretty. But then this is what they're gonna look like when they come out of the oven. Aren't, Aren't those that, wonderful? Yeah, they look beautiful. Of course, butter is yes. always a plus yes. to put on these as soon as they come out. It just yeah. makes it really nice. I think we need to see if somebody would like to taste these. What yes, think? good idea. Think we have any takers? I'd yep. like to volunteer. All right, well, come on up here, Scott. Let's see if you like these, if these pass your inspection. There you go. <laughs> Those are delicious. Oh, oh good. good. That's great. Tastes like grandma's. Oh, good. Wonderful. That's what we like. That's what we, That's like, what we to like to hear. Yep. Well, there you have it, folks. Our angel biscuits right here from Marcy Joe's where we're changing lives one bite at a time. Every week as part of the show, we like to take the moment to introduce you to some new artists that we really believe in, whose music we think is wonderful. This week, who do we have, hon? This week we have a young lady who has really been instrumental in our recording. She's done some, a lot of harmony on our, our albums before in the past. She sings like an angel. Y'all, please make welcome Miss Val Story. I'm Val Story. I'm originally from the hills of Virginia, but I grew up close to Nashville, Tennessee in a little town called Gallatin. Um, grew up around all kinds of music. Uh, my mama and daddy both were singers and musicians, so I um, got to soak up a lot of country and a lot of gospel music. We went to church uh, as often as it was open, and that was a really good thing in my early life because as I, as I got older and had my own children, um, uh, when you have children, you need a lot of faith. <laughs> um, and if you have them, you know that. Several years ago, I was able to go in the studio and record um, a gospel record, um, something I'd always wanted to do. During that time, uh, my family, my, my brother uh, specifically, had a child who was very sick, and that child had a twin sister. So that twin came to, to live with me, 
And I had just done this gospel record and had all these plans to go on the road and, and sing and had to change all these dates because I really needed to be there um, for my family. But it was a time of growing for me spiritually and a time that I went back to all that scripture that I had learned as, as a child. And so I'm, I'm uh, really thankful that I grew up in a home where my parents took me to church and uh, raised me um, to believe in a, a higher power and that he had everything in his hands. We have a very special guest on the Joey and Rory show with us today. This is one of Joey's dearest friends and just an absolute sweetheart, Miss Joanne. How are you doing this fine day? Okay. Great. Come step right up here. Looks like you brought something with you today. Yes, I brought a, one of my older quilts that I thought Joey would like. 
I bet she would like it. Well, tell us about this quilt. Well, it's a scrap quilt. It's this is beautiful. How long did it take you to make something like this? Uh, a long time. <laughs> I bet it does. And you and Joey do a lot of quilting and crafting together? Some, and uh, I taught her to quilt. You taught her to quilt? Right. Okay. Wow. To make her first quilt. That is wonderful. Thank you so very much for being on the show today, Miss Joanne.